What this movie doesn't show is when she went on to win the Battle of the Sexes. I'm Justin. More flat nuts than a testicle pancake house. I'm Sam. Why is it that uh, women cut their hair off and then declare that they're strong? Is it like the opposite of Samson? I'm Jackie, and this is Billie Jean Davy. That's her last name. <laughs> The oh, Legend of Billy Jean. The movie's called the Legend, Legend of, of Billy Jean. Legend <laughs> of Billy Jean. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Sticker Madness. I'm your host, Justin. With me are always Sam and Jackie. Uh, first off, I want to start out by apologizing for two out of three Sticker Madness hosts last week sounding good and one of them sounding pretty bad. Uh, I hope I sound better this week, guys. We're still hammering out some uh, kinks in some gremlins. We got boxes of gremlins. I opened a box up and it was like, don't put water on me. And I put water on it and ran through the house and screwed up all our audio. Yeah. You opened the box up and there was a, there was a mogwai in there being like, stop peeing on me. Why are you just (laughs) peeing into a box? I thought you were in the toilet. (laughs) Sorry. Okay. I drank a lot of beers. And I got a little confused. Sorry about your pee-pee face. (laughs) Well, sorry about your microwave buster. (laughs) Yeah. Now I'm just going to be minorly annoying and sort of evil. (laughs) Gremlins! Uh, Does anybody die in Gremlins? What's the body count? I I haven't watched those in forever. I just got the special edition of the first one. And I haven't revisited it yet. Oh, no. um, What's his name? Uh, The working guy. Harry... uh... Oh, we always talk about him. Uh, the Harry old Harry Dean Stanton. No, no, no. The old old guy. He's always the old guy in the movie. Uh, oh, rats! Are right, right now, the, somebody's listening, being like, "You stupid bastards!" It's Harry. Stupid bastards. Or maybe his character's always named Harry in the movies. Uh, he's in everything. He died. I'll tell you who recently. did die in that movie is the old lady with the cats who gets oh, yeah. skyrocketed got, from yeah, her wheelchair the, uh, from her yeah. stair lift thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, she didn't make it. <laughs> Uh, and then what's his name? Harry got ran over by the bulldozer, I think. Mm-hmm. Went through the house. Isn't that right, Jax? Yeah. You're a big gremlin It's where fan. it destroyed the Christmas tree, and it was yeah. like, oh, no. He smashed They Harry. really just sort of kill themselves with assistance from gremlins when you yeah, think right. about it, though. Kind of. The old lady got it, but she deserved it. She was an old bitch. Uh, this week on the podcast, though, it's Jackie's pick. Uh, this movie from 1985. Uh, currently streaming, not for free, but it is two ninety nine on Amazon and several other platforms. Starring Helen Slater of Supergirl fame and Christian Slater of Last Week fame. Uh, you guys knew about this movie way before I did. I want to go to Jackie first because you said, I've always wanted to see that movie. When did that I've always wanted to see? What was the first day you said that? I remember I was in the video store. And where VHS tapes were rented, people. And you could rent a VCR <laughs> if you know what the fuck that is. Right. Uh, and I remember seeing it and I thought, man, that is a cool movie cover. And I remember asking my parents if we could rent it. And my dad's like, no. Yeah. Put it back. So it's Dick similar. Miller. I had the same thing. <laughs> Sorry. It's like what happens is, is you see the front of it and you're like, that shit looks awesome. And you're like, mom, can I get this? And she turns it over and there's brawless wet Helen Slater. And she's like, no. So on the back of all of the videotapes and the, even the DVD still has the, the wet brawless Helen Slater. And parents were like, uh, uh-uh. uh, Nope. That's even why though I you're going to learn it. a lot from this movie about life. So you didn't know anything other than the cover, Jackie. Yeah, I just thought she looked totally rad. Okay. That's a very 80s thing to say, but she looked yeah. freaking awesome, right? Like, she was badass. Yeah. And I was okay. pretty sure that she was beating up men. So I was into it, you know, because I liked she when I was young, too, and she beats the shit out of men. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so uh, you'd never seen any, like, preview or trailer or, or film footage of it at all? Mm-hmm. You had no idea I what it was no- about? Nope. Even even when we started watching it, I had no idea what this movie was okay. about. All right. I just always liked the cover, and we bought this. I bought this one, didn't I? On yeah, DVD. I think you bought it for one of my birthdays. Yeah. Yeah, because I wanted to watch it so bad, and every time that I would like put it in, 
on the streaming services, you always had to pay for it. And I was like, $2.99? I bet I can find this in the $5 bin. I'm totally going to go find this movie. My special edition Blu-ray was like 6 or $7. Yeah. Brand new. Yeah. All right, Sam, what so, about you? Uh, you said you saw also the cover. Did you know anything other than that? I didn't. I've always wanted to watch it to the point when I get weird about a movie. Like... It sits in the cellophane until I watch it. I will. I, w- I didn't read about it first. I didn't do anything. I was like, I'm going into this completely fresh. I've wanted to watch this movie for 25 fucking years. Mm-hmm. Maybe 30 years. It's about 30 years I've wanted to watch this movie. Okay. All right. Well, uh, in that case, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about the history of it with your BBS he just said so, that he didn't do shit for for this podcast, didn't I you hear I did him? after the oh, oh. fact, and I <laughs> kind of feel a little bit bad because on the front of it, it says, I should have watched this twice, to be honest, because the commentary is Heather Slater and Yeardley Smith, and I'm like, oh, fuck. And I would have, I sh- there's probably some good stuff in there that's not, there, probably is, there yeah. was one thing that's very good in the commentary that everyone talks about on the, on the internet is that... Yeardley Smith is a little top heavy and she was supposed to be playing 14. So they duct taped her stuff down to the point that she almost passed out twice. Oh, and uh, also the lady that played her mom actually slapped the living piss out of her and her face was numb for like half a day. Shit. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Try to be professional lady. I mean, I know you want to get the shot, but it's not like you're in a Jackie Chan movie. (laughs) And the uh, other irony is that she refused to cut her hair for the part. They hid oh. it in that jacket. That's why she has the jacket, so they can put a wig on her and hide the ponytail. Oh, okay. And uh, what's odd is that she wears her hair short for, like, the rest of her career. <laughs> <laughs> She's got short hair now. Jackie, do you know who Yeardley Smith is? Yes, she is the okay. voice of Lisa Simpson. And Bart Simpson. Oh, really? And Bart? Yeah. She's the voice of, like, there's there's her and Hank Azaria pull heavy lifting in that show. Yeah, I mean, because Justin asked me who she was, and I'm like, yeah, I recognize her. I've seen her in other stuff. Mm. And then he's like, that's the voice of of Lisa Simpson. And then the whole movie, I just was thinking, like, why did you fucking tell me that? Because now I, all I could see is no, Lisa Simpson is, standing yeah. there. Bye! And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Christmas um, Slater, stop that! <laughs> this is... Apparently, the rumor is still that Heather Slater and Christian Slater Helen. are Helen. brother and sister. Helen. Helen. Her name Slater. is Helen Slater. God damn it. Helen. How could I forget her name? She's a goddess. <laughs> um, she is, like, her eyes and everything. She is just beautiful. She's a beautiful woman. Yeah. Yeah. Supergirl, I didn't, I mean, they're not going to, they're not going to, like, pull some lunch meat off the shelf and stuff her in a Supergirl <laughs> Africa costume, right? <laughs> that was a, before this. She got was, a special like, on 20. Hand. <laughs> it's Black Force. She was damn. 20. Two or 23 when they shot this. Yardley Smith was in her 20s as well. Um, but Christian Slater was 14 when they started shooting this. And his comment was, no, we're not brother and sister at the time. He's like, but I feel like we're going to get married. It's a sign because we have the same last name. And I think he did really good that that's all he did. Because in the opening scenes when she's like not wearing any underwear and sort of holding him tight from behind on the scooter... That's a good job to only go that far. Like he contained himself because if that was me at 14 and a 23 year old woman is on me that much after they wrap that shoot for the day, I go into my trailer and I jack off to death. I don't think you even make it that far. I think I think uh, at 14, Sam, you would you would have had messy pants and been like, "Ah, do we keep filming? (laughs) Yeah, No, she's like, hi, I am. Helen Slater, and then the front of my pants explode, and I fall over, and they're like, fire that young man. <laughs> Somebody get a mop. Christian Slater, uh, unknown professional. We we had no idea yeah. what a pro he was, but at 14, he kept his shit together pretty good. I would have had a hard time. <laughs> so is this before or after him and Tony Hawk are friends? This is, he was 20 when they did Gleaning the Cube. Oh, okay, 20. So- yeah, 20 or 21. This is his first movie. Yeah. Really? Yes. And Ooh. I would be willing to say probably his, like, yeah, the movie is bullshit. But as far as what Christian Slater did, I'm usually the first to throw that guy under the bus. And I was like, I get it. I get why he had a trajectory. Like, he got the Feldmans wandering around. And then this Christian Slater kid comes along. And it's like, yeah, okay. 
Uh, he seems like he's, he's competent actor. He's awesome in this. Yeah, he was oh, pretty he's good. he's really good in this. That's why I'm kind of surprised that it's his first movie. Because usually, you know, someone's first movie is like, oh, God. Like, good thing you got better with age. My Lord. Say there didn't. <laughs> he, you know what? We watch this and you watch Heather's and a couple of his other movies, like the Henry Poole one. You just go, what they did to you was wrong, Christian Slater. Oh, yeah. What they did to you was wrong. Oh, yeah. You could have been a good actor, <laughs> but they put you in shit that you, God, why do they do that to you? I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. He's he's crying all the way to the bank, right? <laughs> oh, Kevin, yeah. He's, he's doing real fine. disappointed in his career. Kevin, Kevin Costner. I have a brother. Oh, God, Kevin Costner. You're worse than Christian Slater in this movie. <laughs> that's un, That's unfair to Christian Slater. It really is. Except for the fact that Christian Co- or da- Kevin Costner is completely awesome in a few things, like Ten Cop. He's fucking awesome in that. Right, sure. He was great in Robin Hood. Yeah. No, he wasn't. No, he he's was terrible. Not. He's fucking awful. <laughs> I knew you guys would fall for that one. That's because I just, <laughs> yeah. I just told you that one. I, I think you missed the I have a brother part of the podcast from the beginning. Just Actually, it was more like 30 seconds ago. Yeah, that's yeah. why I brought it up. Because I wanted to see I'm you. the one that brought it up. I know, but then you guys both did exactly what I thought you would. That's right. Master manipulator on um, this podcast. Woo, woo. Yeah. Well, anyway, this is Helen Slater's second appearance, and I think she's probably going to be showing up one more time okay. in Sticky Fingers, which looks real fun. Okay. Is um, that about sticking your fingers in somebody's hole? I don't think so. I think it's nope. that's a euphemism for thievery, Jackie. Person's oh. got sticky fingers. Oh, yeah. I was thinking of stinky fingers. Okay, never <laughs> mind. <laughs> stinky fingers is definitely what you were thinking, but uh, there's no euphemism <laughs> about stinky fingers other than putting them in people's orifices. So, yeah. <laughs> Sam's the face. More you those, are, know. those are violating fingers. <laughs> <laughs> what if you do it to yourself? You still get stinky fingers. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <sighs> Anyway, but you can't steal uh, from yourself, so you can't. Peter Coyote's in this. He's in all sorts of shit. He's awesome. Eric um, Roberts. I liked Eric Roberts in this movie. Yeah. So that's who Peter Coyote is, is not shitty Eric Roberts. Because right. <laughs> he's the guy that tries to uh, capture E.T. if we all forgot about that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Was, we all hate him so much. We don't like him. And then we're like, wait, Peter Coyote could have been good if you didn't. Make me hate him so perfectly in E.T. Right. And um, also get me confused with Eric Roberts. Well, I'm not confused because I'm like, why is Eric Roberts not being shitty right now? Like, <laughs> oh, oh, right. Yeah. Because it's Peter Coyote. That's <laughs> gotcha. why. Okay. <laughs> so Peter Coyote, is that the, the dad? The no, detective. Sheriff Roland or Detective Roland. Okay. The cop. So, but the dad of Hubie, he was somebody, wasn't he? Pi- yes. That's uh, Br- Richard Bradford. He's been in Westerns and he was in a lot of 70s shows. He but is he's somebody. always been like the villain. And yes. like every time I see him, I, I think, okay, yeah, he's the villain. I, mean, I think he was the villain in a number of cowboy movies. Mm. Peter, Peter if you Coyote. Don't give me the Dudio it, Ranch, I'll saw y'all in half. Peter Coyote being the villain in E.T. is still not on par with. Uh, what's, what was his name? Bradford? David Bradford? Richard Bradford. Richard Bradford. It's still not on par with m- how much I hate Richard Bradford's character in this movie. Like, I well, never want to see that guy's face again in another movie because of this character. He's he is everything that's wrong with America a real rolled into guy. one guy. Real, yeah. real bad guy. Like, top ten bad guys just a piece of crap. Yes. I was kind of hoping that the at the end he would burn to death, but that didn't happen. I was kind of sad. Well, no, because well, well, we'll get into what the meaning of Billy Jean, the legend of Billy Jean is here at the end, but uh that would have been that would have been counter to some some studio guy would have put their finger on that uh for that to happen. Okay, and then uh, did you guys recognize Keith Gordon, the boyfriend hostage? Keith Gordon. Yeah, I recognized no. him, but he's, he he had like a, a short run in the 80s, right? And yeah, that was but it? then 
he dove behind the camera and directed some films that were very independent films that were pretty well received up to the point that he did the singing detective, which was very well received. Mm. Okay. You guys ever saw that? That was really fun. And that's actually a kind of a comeback on Robert Downey Jr.'s career as well. Hmm. Um, the director of this film, however, is Matthew Robbins, which is one of the Lucas guys. He did Corvette Summer, which we did. Okay. And Dragon Slayer, which is one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Batteries Not Included is his big hit. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't even very good. Jackie, I watched it like two years ago. It holds water. Like that movie Batteries is timeless. It's really Batteries good. Batteries Not Included? Yeah. That's... The statements made about poverty and the American way of life in that film are amazing. There's no way it could have been commercially successful. And there's no way that Jackie as a child would have got it. But as an adult, I was like, whoa, layers. Yeah. Batteries Not Included is an amazing film. Um, It's about poor people, right? Yeah. Right, and, That's and, why I don't care. And slum lords. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a terrible person. <laughs> um, slum lords. Uh, uh, just people being crappy. The elderly a lot, and and like a different elderly take than like say cocoon, where they're just kind of bored. Yeah, these people are just trying to live their lives and stay together as like married people in the same houses that they've lived in for, for sixty years, and the pictures on the wall of yeah, like the beginning of up. It's like the beginning of up, and you're like, yeah, screw these slum lords. Yeah, it's a statement about the discarded members of American exactly, society. Exactly, exactly. Really strong movie. Um, the I'm going to have to watch this, it again. Yeah, it's worth it. Because I just thought it was about the little robot guys. Yeah, that's why it didn't do well. Go it ahead. did well. It did okay, but it's not like... It did okay. Yeah. It did better than any of Matthew Robbins' other movies. Fair this enough. one made like 3.1. Okay. I don't know what it cost. It probably cost... He might have broke even or made something on this one this one made money on the video shelves or would have if they would have put a different picture on the back and then we would have gotten to rent it Mm -hmm. (laughs) um lawrence connor and mark rosenthal also wrote jewel of the nile and mona lisa smile among other things very nice got some some street cred in this film other than a couple of bad cuts and stuff that isn't commercially viable i mean there's some strong writing in this (laughs) <laughs> okay, you might have a different take than I do. I didn't I do. say all of it. I <laughs> okay. said some. Some of it. <laughs> Thematically, it's very strong. <laughs> okay. Uh, I might have a different take than you do. But let's uh, let's find out at the end. All right, all right, if everybody's ready, you done with your boring bullshit yes. there, Sammy? Okay. All right, so what we got here is Corpus Christi, Texas, summertime, mid-80s. It's hot. It's real hot outside. Uh, anybody ever been near Corpus Christi? No, yeah. I did the other side of Texas and it was fucking hot and dry. Okay. This is hot. Like and by wet. Amarillo. Yeah, this is hot and wet. Yeah. So I went there, but it was not hot. It was, uh, kind of during the winter time. So it was just really nice for me. Okay. But I can't even imagine being down there in the summer because if I felt like it was a nice, beginning of spring day there and it was like november or october Mm -hmm. yeah so it was like 70 (laughs) yeah it was like 70 80 degrees i was cooking around in shorts and i was like this is awesome yeah no it gets real hot there in the summer uh but uh it's not a i don't know how do we describe the corpus christi that exists in the context of this film for the most part it's uh you, you, you wouldn't call them bio people, bio people, but you wouldn't call them. Well, I mean, well, what, what, who we got working here? These look like Texas swampers. Swampers, okay, Texas swampers. <laughs> they're not. Uh, I just made that up. Yeah, they're not. Uh, I don't want to. I'm just trying to be so gentle here, but uh, I guess trash, trailer trash. If we're gonna put a label on these people, they're mostly trailer trash, right? That's what the poor. movie's saying. Yeah. That they don't matter because they live in the trailer park. Yeah, right. right. Uh, but our guy, Christian Slater, his character's name is Binks. Binks has got a bright future because he went out after his dad left him some insurance money. I'm not really sure how that works out, but uh, left him. I believe he is dead. 
Oh, oh, life insurance money. I thought you meant like car crash. Like, here you go, son. <laughs> In classic tradition of the trailer park, mm -hmm. when they got some money, instead of getting out of the trailer park, they got jet skis. Yeah. Yep. Yep. An old bank He got a scooter. A Honda Elite. And the reveal of the Honda Elite is about as good as the reveal of the 250 GT California and Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he keeps it in a shed, and it's it's a nice shed. It's not a crappy shed or a shanty or anything. I mean, this is a legitimate shed that mm -hmm. he has just for his awesome scooter, which is where the rest of his inheritance money went after his dad died. He bought a scooter, and then he had to buy yes. a shed for, around the scooter. Yep, and the shed actually looks nicer than their home. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's saying something when you're like, dude... I'll live in that shithole. We're not going to upgrade our trailer, but I do need a shed and this Honda Elite. Yeah. I and know. in the 80s, I mean, that money would have paid for a brand new trailer. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know. Or pretty damn close. Yeah. In the defense of people who live in Texas that live in trailers and don't get out of there, they're like, why would I build something that's going to get fucking blown over? Right. Good replace point. this fucking trailer for 2600 bucks. Yeah. Not today. Now trailers are worth a fucking king's ransom. True. He picks up his, uh, his sister, Billie Jean, and they're going to go cruise around in town, get some ice cream. Probably put in about three gallons of gas and fill that Honda lead up and drive for about 150 miles because it's what it does. Bucko five gas. Yeah, Bucko five Saw gas. Saw the sign. I got a. I got oh a ten God, spot. What did we pay today? Five. I put five in twenty nine. Yeah, I put in a gallon. Five gallon. Four gallons and spent twenty five bucks. Yeah, it was fun. Um, so they get into town, get their ice cream, and they start getting hassled by these dudes. We're gonna call them the Charger Boys. Or Hoovy's crew. Who Hugh Hubies. Hubie. 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 Like Hubert? Who names yeah, who names their kid after after the hubris? Hubert? The hubris. The name. The hubris. I've named my Hubie? child hubris. The the bone. The, you think yep. he's named after a bone instead of Hubert, as in the president's name. I'm going with the bone. My son is named Hubris, <laughs> and the dog's name is Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tibula. Uh, so, <laughs> so they're hassled by these guys. They're they're all catcalling, you know, because she's hot on the back of the scooter. And woo, woo, woo. Uh, I don't know who ever said, "Okay, guys, this is how you get chicks." Just go woo, woo. <laughs> She's gonna be like, I love it. Yeah, yeah, cat call them and say derogatory comments about their personal appearance. That will get them every time Woo! to go out with you. Woo! Woo! And then try to lift lift up their skirt so you can look at their underwear because that's also a golden ticket to a date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Woo! Uh, and one dude comes up and he puts gum on the seat of the scooter. Gum. Gross. Yeah, that's Hubie. Yeah. And what sucks about this is that the 80s are back so hard that I saw a guy wearing the same shorts as him. Like Ooh. last week. Nice. Sucks. I would like that hat that he's wearing later, the TNC style, the one they ape wore. Mm -hmm. All the shit that shouldn't come back from the 80s, all of it's come back. Rompers, the whole thing. <laughs> but that hat isn't back. That hat's pretty cool. <laughs> And uh, Hubie calls his uh, bike a, pardon my French, but a fag machine. And they're like, get on, get out of here. He oh, he dumps his uh, milkshake on Hubie's face and they get on the scooter and take off. Yeah. So they go swimming in a pond. And, uh, and I don't know about you guys, but I don't go swimming in my knickers with my brother. With your, with your very much younger bro. Yeah, that was just kind of like, ew, weird. I mean, I guess, I don't know. Sam, we're from the sticks. This was kind of a common thing in the sticks. Like, yeah. You'd see this it was. a lot. It, it's, yeah. it's hot outside. Yeah. We're, we're going swimming. I don't care who I'm going with. Look, little bro, you can drop me off, but I'm getting in that water. 
your parents say things like, just get it in your underwear. Yeah. And you're like, well, that's my option or I stay hot. So undies it is. God, were you two too poor for swimsuits? What are those? We had undies. <laughs> underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god plus it was a real yeah. boon to the water bill because uh then you didn't have to wash your drawers mm -hmm. double dipping mm -hmm. you just turn them inside out and wear the shit out of them yeah and the river was your toilet <laughs> yep <laughs> fish I mean, food you think i'm kidding <laughs> i watched some oh god the hydro wipe the hydro wipe <laughs> What the hell is the hydro wipe? The hydro wipe is when you're swimming and you have to shit. I've never done it because I'm like, I can hold it. I'll wait till we get back and I'll use a toilet. But I'll, those from Garden Valley, Idaho, who shall remain unnamed, would just crap in the river and then find an area of fast current, like a little white one, and they just shake their cheeks in the fast water like that was good enough. It's like, no, you can't ride in my car. You should walk home. You hydro wiped. <laughs> that is disgusting. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't think you're. <laughs> wow. I don't, I don't think you're uh, qualified to discuss what it's like to be these types of people. Yeah. Jackie, Sam, and I are. <laughs> Apparently, you've never done the payette bidet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not, sir. <laughs> mm. All right. Uh. All right, so they're in the pond, uh, and uh, they're dreaming about living elsewhere. He wants to move to Vermont because he it's because there's a naked lady on the poster, yeah, right? There. Right, pinks in a swimsuit with ski poles. Uh huh. That's it, he knows about Vermont. They got babes and skiing, and not guys like Hoobie. Yeah, that poster's just cover for. So that his mom thinks that he's not jacking off to his sister all the damn time. Right. See, it's her, the Vermont lady. That's <laughs> that's the one there, her. Who looks remarkably like my sister. Ooh. Uh, oops. Paging Dr. Uh. Freud. Okay. Um, so the Charger douches, they show up and they uh, screw around on his scooter and then they steal it and uh, push him into the dirt and take off. And they Ooh, were forgetting a remarkably poor dive by Helen Slater. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was it was a belly flop. It was not a good dive. Mm. So you've just made the list of bad dive. Stinker Madness's list of bad divers. Yep. Christian Slater did a good dive. It did. Good, it good did. dive. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, they get back to the trailer and the mom blames Binks for it. It's like, well. If you weren't hot dogging around all the damn time, it's your fault. God damn it, mom, you suck. Mom sucks, right? Yeah, she yeah. sucks. She's a bad mom. She's they, going she, on a date with some with guy. Yet another skis bag. Yeah, skis bag. A car salesman, and she's like, right? "Hopefully, this guy bangs me in his car." Oh, Don't ugh. wait up. Ugh. All right. Yeah, she's so, classy. About Binks vows to get it back. Uh, the scooter. I vowed to get my scooter back. And so uh, Billie Jean, she enlists her friends Putter and Ophelia to take her down to the police station. Because yep. Ophelia's got a station wagon that she can drive around. So she takes her down to the station, the police station. We meet Ringwald. And he's like, all right, well, maybe he was asking Station for to it. station. Yeah. Oh, hey, nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And he's like, uh, maybe he was asking for it. Did you think about that? Huh? Was he asking for it? Because I think he might have been asking for it. She's like, God damn it, I hate the 80s. Uh, no, he wasn't asking for it. They stole it. Can you do something about the yeah. theft? And at the same time, Ringwald does a good job throughout the whole movie as a, as a in, in the movie world. He's like, this guy's dad is such a pain in the ass. I'm going to give him a day or two to give it back. If he mm -hmm. doesn't, well, I'll go down there and fucking shake him down. But this kid's an asshole and arresting him is going to cause a big stink. So yeah, just so clear him, jets for now. I'll take care of it. Let him get away with it. Yeah, that's going to work out later. Uh, huh? 
Okay. So she finds it. She gets back home. She finds it there in front of the trailer. It's trashed. And so is Binks. It beat him up. Because I, yep. I guess he went and tried to get it back or something. He did. He went to go get his scooter back and they kicked the living shit out of him, tore up his scooter and tossed the whole mess of him and his scooter out the side of a charger like a, a heap of trash. <laughs> So the next day they go down to Hoobie's work, his dad's shop, and uh, our Billie Jean, she's like, here's a bill for $608. Very important, the $608 to repair mm-hmm. the, the scooter and replace it. They're not even asking for, like, damages to Binks, just the scooter. I think they're fair is fair after all, right? Fair is fair. Yeah. But then he's like, I'm not paying for that. It's stupid. So she gives him a couple acres. To the balls. <laughs> yep. Second time already. <laughs> He's just, and his dad's like, get off the ground. Your nuts are <laughs> soft. You got soft nuts. <laughs> Later on, we'll find that he has soft nuts too, but. Uh, so he sort of like acts like he's going to smooth things. as yeah, my son's kind of an asshole, mm-hmm. but would you like to now instead meet the world's largest piece of human shit yeah he's like i'll give you your money i don't keep that kind of cash in the register come on upstairs Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then he proceeds to try to rape her for 50 bucks like not and says that she can get not just the one time it's it's on a she's on a rape payment plan yes you can come here and bang me and if you do a good job, you'll get more than you'll get fifty two dollars next time. Yeah. Like bad, real bad guy. I'm not saying that like raping somebody once is bad, but when you put them on like a come back by again later for me to rape you again and day, someday you'll get that six hundred. Oof. Oh, boy. Yeah, because at this, this is- rate, he would rape her 12 times. He's like a Catholic priest, basically. Yeah. Or a Russian oh. soldier. Yeah. <sighs> what a fucking... Ugh. Okay. Um, And then, like, the rest of the movie also, it's gross, because she never says anything about it. No, because it's okay. Because it's the... Eight, uh... Uh, it's about... It's $600 and eight. Or 608 is her... Recompense, not you yeah, go to jail well, for rape, you scumbag. It's uh, because it's uh, fair is fair. It's, fair is fair. Cut his dick off. Yeah. You know, pre sexual assault being a crime. This is just like page three of the guys who can't get laid playbook on rape. Uh-huh. All right. So Biggs comes in. She's upstairs. He tries to get the money out of the cash register, but instead, inside is a gun. And he's like, whoa, gun. And so dad comes down. What are you guys doing in here? Hey, uh, get back over here, girl. And Pigs is like, let my sister go. And he's like, you guys get out of here. And then Hoobie comes in. He's like, kid, call the cops. They're trying to rob me. And they're like, no, we aren't. You're trying to rape my sister. And he's like, drop the gun, kid. It's not even loaded, you little pussy. Oh, yeah? Well, then I guess this won't matter. Kablam! Shoots him. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's how it went. Called the bluff. <laughs> so they all get back and they run away. They, uh, Ophelia, Putter, and uh, the whole crew are all involved. And that's the start of the movie. And now Got the plot. That's the start. Yeah. yeah. Gets now they're on the quick. run. Yeah. And Well, then they get Lisa Simpson. Putter. And Putter. she decides, Putter, so that she's going to go with them. Mm-hmm. And so she packs up all of her shit and in this huge duffel bag. Like, where right. did you get that thing? It's bigger than she is. And she drags it out the trailer park window and jumps out. And then she jumps back in. She jumps into the car and they're off. Yeah. So they don't know where they're going. They don't have a plan. Uh, they spend the night at this mini golf place. And that will come back into play later. Uh, and uh, they, they are like, oh, we're going to. We're going to run, so we got to stop at a gas station, but we don't have any money, so we're going to try to get all these snacks and, and candy and stuff. And Putter's like, my mom never buys me Kit Kat, so I want some Kit Kat. And uh, they're like, you're never going to get out of here with all that candy, kid. 
but we're rich and we know who you are. You were in the paper. We'll put it on my dad's tab, thus leading to the start of the legend of Billy Jean. How bad did dad beat the shit out of those kids for the $68 worth of candy they just put on his tab? Oh, (laughs) actually, probably not at all, because if they're pulling that shit, they get away with goddamn everything. Right, exactly. So Billie Jean, she calls home and uh, she decides that they're going to turn themselves in. This has gone on already too far. They don't have a they don't have an escape route. So uh, they're going to they're going to turn themselves in, but only if they get money for the scooter, the 608. And Pyatt, he's like, yeah, I'll I'll go down to the mall where you're going to meet him up and pretend that I'm going to give him money, but I'm not giving the money. He tells the cop that. Ringwald. Ringwald's like, why did I bring you down here? Maybe I'm not a very good detective, Sam, because why are you here, Pyatt, if you're not going to play along? And you just told me you're not going to play I along. Seriously feel like he's actually trying to get Pyatt. This whole movie, he's trying to get Pyatt. Okay. All right. Well, interesting. And... That's why he's put his own money on this. Because the cops, like, I go fine. I'll I'll pay the six hundred and eight dollars to get this resolved because there's probably an actual crime here, sir. Mm. And I don't think it has anything to do with just fucking up a scooter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I think too, Sam. I, that's the complete vibe that I got was I'm after Pyatt, and all I need is for her to come forward and to tell her story, and then I can nail this son of a bitch. Yeah, if he's got a rape payment plan, this is not strike one. Yeah, he's done it before. This guy's a rolling pile of shit. Yeah, okay. Well, the kids, they have a plan just in case. To go... Well, and you know, it was kind of weird because he's like, your mom is a real piece of ass. Mm Mm-hmm. She's not. Right before he tries to rape... He will fuck a mailbox. This guy's such a creep. Yeah, and I'm like, (laughs) God, does that mean that you raped her mom on a payment plan? Maybe. Like weird yeah maybe or just did she you know she went out on at least on a date with him so yeah, you, never, you never see a mom you never you never see mrs pyatt right right so i think she's uh she's tr- she's tried all the bases in town and pyatt was one of them and that date went poorly because they didn't go out again obviously but i think he still got what he wanted yeah, he was about to introduce her to the rate payment plan, but she uh-huh. already finished blowing him, and he's like, I'm leaving now. Thank yeah. you, bye. <laughs> She's like, but the rate payment plan is like, yeah, do that before the blowjob, stupid. <laughs> uh, so uh, the kids have this plan. It involves shoplifting uh, at the KB Toy Store, I'm assuming, and they get some walkie-talkies and a fake gun and some other G. stuff. G.I. Joe Field Belt. Yeah, hell yeah. I remember that thing. <laughs> I remember my brother crying <clears throat> because he couldn't have one. Because <laughs> we already had walkie-talkies that didn't work, was what my dad said. He's like, you've already got walkie-talkies that don't work. Those ones are just as shitty. <laughs> my, like, looking back on everything my dad did, I'm like, what a great dad. Right. But at the time, you're like, God, why are you going to my wife, Dad? I hate you. Feel bad. And it's like, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> Fuck no. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So she goes down to where Pyatt's at. And uh, he's like, I'm not giving you crap. He drops the envelope on the ground and steps on it. And she's like, oh, you dick. And he calls Hooby and his guys to get her. And the cop is like, what? <laughs> yeah. He's like, you just set up a fucking ambush. Right. Okay. This is getting better. You're really doing a good job helping me out arrest you, but I need a little bit more because I want to put you away for a while. Yeah, they, he's got him on obstruction, right? This is obstruction. He's got him on obstruction. Yeah. I think obstruction's like six months, I think. He wants him in the can for 10 years, yeah. and the guy deserves to be there, right? Well, yeah. Okay. All right. So she runs away. She runs up the escalator and and does some little 80s movie trickery to run away. Climbs through water fountains. She kicks him in the balls again. Yep. And uh, then she she Which is awesome. Yeah, she drops the marbles to make him go whoop, 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 whoop. The best part about uh, you be taking it to the nuts the second time Mm -hmm. is he's like struggling 
to ride the escalator. Like if he gets to the top of the escalator, his nuts will get unkicked. <laughs> it is hilarious. <laughs> so she gets to the car while Binks blocks the doorway. But then the cop comes out because he took a different route. And Binks pulls the funny gun on, a phony gun on him. And uh, they they drive off. And now there's a statewide manhunt on because they, they're armed and dangerous. Yeah. It's a little bit of uh, Bonnie and Clyde and only related. Serious Bonnie and Clyde undertone of this whole entire movie. So they squat in this mansion that they find, and but someone's there. Someone's there watching them. So Billie Jean goes to take a look, and she finds this Fangoria nerd named Lloyd, who's a rich kid. Uh, Turns out he's the DA's son. She, she, she finds a werewolf. Yeah, that tries to scare her, and she kicks him in the nards and it's like i don't think so fuck face so many nuts she's a loose <laughs> cannon on the nut kicking and i like it i mean this is she she means business that's why she's the legend more broken balls in okay. an episode of america's funniest videos you could you could pave a road with all those flat nuts <laughs> <laughs> They see themselves on the news, and it's all a bunch of lies. Uh, this guy comes on, oh, yeah, they held me at gunpoint, and they stuffed things in my butt, like, like my Batmans. And uh... Yeah, the, <laughs> so now the, the news is basically just aiding in insurance fraud uh -huh. at a large scale. Right. Uh, she hit me in the head with a baseball bat, and uh, uh, I can't see straight ever again. I had riches hidden, riches hidden in the closet, and she took all of it. It was, it was a hundred thousand dollars. It's gone now. Yeah. The, the insurance company needs to know there was a hundred thousand dollars. Meanwhile, Kristen Slater at some point says, we just need to go to Vermont because they're right. hungry, right? And he's like, right. if we go to Vermont, we can eat. Plants and leaves and stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and they're like, um, no. And my thought was, you're trailer trash. You know how to trap bunnies. Just go out and get one. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, bunny There's trappers. There's armadillos in Texas. And they actually, like, you just flip them over. And they're, they, they have, like, their own pan, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know. Pan slash bowl. <laughs> Just cook them and mm -hmm. spoon them. <laughs> yum, yum. Dilla hot bowls. <laughs> Dilla so, hot bowl. That's so gross. <laughs> I'm eating its tummy, everyone. And the best everyone. part is it has a handle. <laughs> It has a handle for a tail, so yeah. you, you know you can just sit. Oh, yeah, you whatever just... you don't finish. Did you did you gut that Dilla first? No. no. Did you get the poop out? That's Dilla butter. <laughs> Dilla hot bowl. <laughs> In Texas, it's polite to sup your to sup your uh, your Dilla bowl. <laughs> yep. Use use his butthole yeah, as a get... straw. <laughs> Yeah. Like subsidized hot mitts so you don't burn your hands on the Dilla hot bowls. <laughs> All right, so they turn the channel uh, from the news to Joan of Arc. It's an old Joan of Arc movie. And she's like, who's this? Open a book one goddamn time, you fucking ignorant. And uh, Lloyd's like explaining to her who Joan of Arc is, and then he's like, and then she died, and he jumps out the window, yeah. and it's a fish and slide that leads down to his big-ass pool. He's like, "You that is the water slide in the window? Are you kidding me? Hell yeah. Wow. Except for the other wow. you gotta go in the house to use it. Which means you get your house all wet. How many times has he unsuccessfully done that, though, and then just fallen off the slide because it's slick? Whoa! To and then just hit the Whoa! pavement underneath. <laughs> None times, Jackie never died because he was still alive when we saw him. So he was he was still alive. When they <laughs> but he is also made... dressing up like a werewolf and playing haunted music. So he might have fallen off a couple of times and hit his head <laughs> from I'm thirty feet. <laughs> thirty <laughs> feet. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm There's just also saying... another fun line in here when they're eating the they're stealing the food out of the fridge. 
And he's like, what is this? And she's like, it's chicken. He's like, it doesn't taste like chicken. And, and Ophelia goes, when you're rich, your food tastes like stuff it's not supposed to taste like. <laughs> right. Like, God damn, this movie is really so true. It's awful. <laughs> All right, so everybody else goes down the slide, too, except for uh, Billie Jean, who watches the rest of the movie. Come into play later. Uh, she hatches a plan to videotape messages to the news stations telling the truth. So she chops her hair off to make her look famous. Because that's when she comes out with chopped hair, and they're like, wow, no. you look famous. He said that she cut her hair short and dressed like a boy. So that people would believe she was a soldier and then all of France followed her. And so she's actually dressing like a warrior and she cuts her hair off, puts on the top of a wetsuit that has an eagle on the back of it. True. And like puts on like leather wastelander fist punching gear Mm -hmm. and army pants. Mm -hmm. Jackie, costume talk. Is this the most badass thing you've ever seen? (laughs) Yes. Oh, all right. It is. <clears throat> it's on the cover of the of the video. She looks badass. But then again, to my opening statement, why do you have to cut your fucking hair off? I, to be like Joan of to Arc. Be like Joan of Arc. But then, wow, now she looks famous. Is what Pupper Putter says. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she looks all right. I liked her with longer, better with longer hair. But you look like you could be on TV. I mean, that wetsuit's going to start to stink after a while. <laughs> Let's just be realistic. You're going to get some boob sweat going on, and it's just going to start smelling like munge. Well, she only wears it for, like, this one scene, too. That's the other thing that I found striking about the movie is, like, oh, she only wears that, like, once. Uh-huh. Huh. How about yeah. that? Yeah, and it's not like she has a military persona after this scene, so it's kind of mm. like, oh, what was the point of that? Right. So, so that people wouldn't recognize you with your haircut? But then you got on national TV with your haircut. Like, this kind of backfired on you, honey. If you were trying to, like, disguise yourself as a man, like Joan of Arc, you kind of missed the boat. You should have done the recording with long hair and then cut your hair off. I think mm. she does just fine. She cuts her hair because it gets in the way of her nut kicking. <laughs> she's, she's very... <laughs> she's, like, she's streamlined for smashing balls now. Yeah. And she's like, I'm still a lady, so I'm going to unzip this badass eagle wetsuit and show off a little of the goods. Like, she's like, yeah, don't fuck with me. Also, (laughs) I'm still hot. (laughs) That's just what she was like. All right, so Lloyd, uh, they finished filming, and Lloyd's like, okay, so you got nothing to negotiate with against these cops. They got all the power. Um, I'll be your hostage. And so he volunteers to be a hostage and go with them and and, uh, because he's valuable. So now she's got a bargaining chip, just in case. Yeah. He never even bothers to mention that he's the district attorney's son. Good info. No, he just just wants to go. He's Mm -hmm. got a piece of tape and some rope, and he's like, okay, I'm ready. You guys actually seem pretty cool. What, dick face? I've been hanging out in this house for like two weeks by myself. I have seen all of my horror movies, my Christopher Lee Dracula collection that I have on VHS, Six times. I've read all my Fangorias. I am so bored and lonely. I'm going with you. Has nothing to do yeah, with Yeah, and she hostage. did say something like, "I." she's already wanting to get everybody else uninvolved. There's too much danger. And he's like, I have to work an angle, but, but I'm coming with you. Also, I love you. You're <laughs> and stupid I have money. hot. <laughs> and I have money. So we can officially pay for gas. And you won't have to like put things on somebody's tab and then be accused of theft. And, and the next scene is, and we could elope to Las Vegas, just you and me, just you and that's too I, far. sharing our love in the back seat. You know, that's what he's thinking. I just farted, yeah, just you and I. I don't, I don't think he's planning on farting I around her. I'm trying to hotbox you. I don't think he's to I don't make th- sure our love I is true. I don't think that's Lloyd's game. I think he's try. He's <laughs> Lloyd's a fart holder in her, Jackie. He is pinching yeah. those butt cheeks around Billy Jean pretty hard. Putter's ripping him. Hooby on the other, <laughs> yeah. Hooby on the other hand is a covered wagon. Mm-hmm. He's uh, yeah. He's a real son of a bitch. <laughs> 
Uh, the next scene is extremely notable because this kid with the red hair and the cowboy boots that delivers the tape they made to the police office mm -hmm. is awesome. Yeah, that kid's like, great. whoa, this kid is awesome. So I'm watching the credits. Uh -huh. The kid gets more awesome at the end of the movie because it said Deliver kid who delivers tape or something like that. They made it absolutely clear to me that this is the kid that I thought was so awesome. His real name is Joshua Butts <laughs> with two T's. <laughs> that is the most awesome kid ever. Josh Butts. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, so uh, Ringwald puts the tape in, and they see the recording, and she says that's what happened. She just wants her six dollars and eight or six hundred and eight dollars because fair is fair. And then she raises her arms and fist pumps, and then every like, and that causes all the other kids around Texas or the whole world. I'm not real clear to be like fair is the fair. Half the country, according to. Uh the detective. Half of the country is uh, is already formed a cult around Billy Jean, and they have little pegboard of Texas, and the reports, the insurance fraud, like the FBI is like bussing people in on the insurance fraud because of all of the Billy Jean crimes that are happening in the perimeter of the state of Texas, mm -hmm. which is a very large state. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like so she can't be covering that much ground. Yeah. He. Everybody knows that it's bullshit. Uh, at the cop shop. Yeah, and everybody's cutting their hair off. Yeah, yeah, everybody. All, all it's a the, movement. the gals cutting it, their hair off. It's a movement. And then there would have been me in the 80s, and I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that. I got a round face. This thing is going to look like <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, no, I, I'll do the fist pump with everybody, but I am not cutting my fucking hair. I'd have been like... I, I'll cut my hair because I'm a boy, but I'm not doing the fist bump because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my parents won't like I, that. At this time, I'm actually throwing it in, in, in this year. I am throwing a tantrum because my mom wasn't able to cut my mullet as good as my dad. And she'd become jealous. <laughs> and I would say thing. I would scream things like you can't cut the back at all. <laughs> The top has to be it's spiky. It's got to be spike. Those are not spikes. <laughs> Meanwhile, your brother's still crying in his bedroom about those G.I. Joe walkie talkies. Yeah, and he has a reasonable haircut. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have the shittiest mullet because the spikes won't go up and it's been bobbed on the back to where it's just <laughs> stupid. And I don't own one fucking T-shirt that has sleeves. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So. Uh, dad shows up, the, uh, Lloyd's dad, he's the DA and he's like, uh, it's Dean, uh, Dean Stockwell, we should mention. Um, yep. Dean Stockwell shows up. Yeah. 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 And he offers, he, uh, $10,000 for Sam. What's that? He leaped there. He leaped there. Boo. Came in on a Cylon ship. Boo. Dean Stockwell has been in like a hundred TV shows, Jackie. <laughs> And like a thousand movies. Talking about the Quantum Leap people. Yeah, I, I get Quantum, quantum leap. leap is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, so elsewhere, Pyatt, he's capitalizing on Billie Jean's fame. He is selling wanted posters, a picture that this weirdo took of her getting out of the lake when she was brawless and wet, and like, get her, and like, don't tread on me, Billie Jean, and... Fuck Nancy Pelosi and Billie Jean posters. But everybody's yeah, this, buying him because they just, love Billie Jean. He's just cashing in because he's a piece of shit. Let's go, yeah, I mean, Billie this just Jean. Escalates him. Yeah, it just escalates him into the next level of piece of shit. Not only is he a serial rapist and just a bad human being, but now he's uh, cashing in on his raping plans. Mm -hmm. Like, my raping plan didn't work out. But I guess I'll make money hand over fist selling this Billy Jean shit. Unauthorized image use. Trump. Mm -hmm. Trump 1988. Yep. That's, that's this guy. There's Perot in 88, you son of a bitch. No, but he's he's selling Trump flags behind the Billy Jean flags. That's because uh, man, you guys don't know anything, right? Those guys Pro on the side 92. of the road. Those guys, yeah. <laughs> those guys on the road selling Trump flags, they're all just grifters. They're just grifting. This guy's a grifter. Yeah. 
So he is he's a grifter. Just, just showing up, selling what he can, even though it's like his mortal enemy or something. I will say that uh, my son and I watched an episode of The Simpsons last night. Mm-hmm. And it was when Mr. Burns is like during the second season where Mr. Burns decides he's going to run for public office. Mm-hmm. And our son turned around and looked at me and goes, is this about Trump? <laughs> like, oh my god this is a really early episode like boy oh. how things don't change mr yeah, burns Mike, is a he's much like, better these person are all kid. the same he was like these are all the same uh political Release the hounds things. <laughs> much, much better person <laughs> that, uh, trump promised and, and right. i'm like and he's like he's just like trump i'm like oh my god okay let's just let this one go kid <laughs> Okay. All right. So some kids tell Billie Jean that they need help. And uh, she starts walking down the street. And that causes an, hey, is that Billie Jean? Hey, whoa, that's Billie Jean. Let's get behind Billie Jean. What's Billie Jean doing? And she's now got an army. She's got a legion of children we, following her down her street to help these kids. But yeah, the, the kids are like, so-and-so's in trouble, Billie Jean. And she's mm-hmm. like, well, shit. Somebody's in trouble. I need to help them. Yeah. And then the Timmy call follows the well, or whatever, but she's really just like, fuck, someone's in trouble. I need to help him. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so she walks down and this kid's getting beat by his dad. And so she walks in and uh, she's like, hey. And he's like, oh, Billy Jean's here. And the truck dad's like, you're not Billy Jean. And she walks into light and he's like, whoa, you are Billy Jean. Can I get your autograph? And she's like, how about you let your son go and never touch him again? He's like, whatever you say, famous lady. And then she leaves. Yeah. Which (laughs) works out good because he was drunk as shit. And those balls were not going to (laughs) notice. Her one move was not going to work on him. Well, and the thing is, is that he he's like, you're not the real Billie Jean. And he gets his belt and he's going to beat her ass, too. Mm hmm. But then he notices all of these kids and people like surrounded the house and he's like, oh, my God, you are Billie Jean. And he's like, please don't kick me in the balls like Sam said, because that's like the one thing he's not using at this time because he's got whiskey dick. But just in case he ever wants to use his wiener again, he's like, please don't kick it. Please. It's already on its last leg. I won't Uh, feel this now, but I will need this later, maybe. Yeah, and, for, you know. And Putter's outside. She's tossing Kit Kats into the crowd. Remember Billie Jean? She <clears throat> She's sponsored by Kit Kat. <laughs> Kit, you know? <laughs> Kit Kat's like, no. No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, so then uh, some rednecks spot her, and they start shooting, and they chase after her. The, the station wagon, he's like, I'm going to shoot the tires out. And she's like, Harold, you can't hit shit with that 22. <laughs> You're going to kill a kid. Oh, shoot it, Billy Jean. God damn it. <laughs> Take the wheel. This I'm going to get her. And he actually pulls off a really good shot because he wasn't aiming. Whenever he right, was aiming, he, was he almost killed the children. Right. <laughs> and then they crash. And it, it's a return of the K5 Blazer again. Like The K5 Blazer has been all over this show the last few weeks. Yeah, it has. All right, so they crash, but he does shoot the tire out. So, oh, oh, but also he manages to, he manages to uh, shoot Putter in the vagina. He doesn't actually. They're like, "Oh my God, Putter, you're bleeding. You should have been shot." And she's like, "I haven't been shot. It's moon blood." And then they're <laughs> all like, "The majesty of the human reproductive oh, system." They celebrate her womanhood. You They're have like, ascended. yeah, it finally happened. And she's like happy about it. Everybody's happy about it. And then she takes a bath in the canal and goes, <laughs> when do I get a diaphragm? They're like, whoa. <laughs> Loaded gun, Yardley Smith. <laughs> she's like, it's happened. I'm ready to rock. I'm a woman. All right. So uh, Billie Jean's like, I seriously thought Putter got shot in the vagina. I can't do this anymore. It's too tense. These I'm I'm taking kids everywhere, putting them in danger. There's guns firing all over the place. There's moon blood in the back seat. I don't know how I'm going to get that out. You know, club soda? Question mark. Either way, things are getting too much. I got to turn I got to I got to turn Ophelia and put her in. They're they're not in any danger and they can just go home. So she rats them out. Like a snitch. Yep. 
like a dirty rat snitch. Loose lips say shit, are... bitch. <laughs> yeah. The cop shows up and he rattles their cage a little bit, but he's only putting on a show for his other guys. Because later he gets him in the room and he's like, look, I'm sorry about that, but no, Billie Jean called me and she's like, I don't want them to get hurt. You gotta, you gotta come get these kids. And he's like, okay, thanks, Billie Jean. I'm gonna get that son of a bitch, but thanks. And so uh, one of her army uh, finds her and knifes her and says, nobody talks! <laughs> Not even you! <laughs> <laughs> and she dies and it's the end of the movie <laughs> you never talk to the cops <laughs> no deals uh, well it could have happened that way because all of these all of a sudden they're like we got her we got Billy Jean yeah. and they come out and there's like three chicks that do not look anything like Billy Jean mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they got the haircut but that's it right. and then Lisa Simpson was like mommy Hunter. and that's when she gets Putter, mommy, and she's so excited to see her mom, mm-hmm. you know, like she's glad to be back. And then her mom just beats the shit out of her. Mm-hmm. She steps back. And you know what? Every cop station, right when you get into booking, has a pair of scissors just kind of sitting there. And she takes them and she cuts her hair off. This is back when you had to cut and paste shit like fingerprints. So they probably did. There's probably scissors and tape fucking everywhere in every yeah. office in America all Good over point. the 80s. Good point. Um, mm. Also, the putter's name was Charlene. The putter. No, nobody. The putter's, the name, putter's is name is Charlene. Um, when Bart Simpson, the mini golf thing, um, he yeah. wants to name his putter. He's like, you have to name your putter. Okay. Like it's, uh, And he's like, okay, my putter's name is Cool Mo D. He's like, your putter's name is Charlene. <laughs> Funny. I like how this movie just kind of wraps in like multiple things. Okay, so elsewhere. Well, she's Bart Simpson. Her name is Putter. I had to do it. Yeah, well, and there's yeah, mini golf. Did. There's mini golf in this movie. And speaking there's, of which, it's... we're at a golf course right now because they get spotted again trying to nab a car and valet's like, get him. And they get chased away and separated. And Billie Jean's on her own. And so she gives him the slip. And with the help of her underground network of teenagers, she's able to escape cross country. Yep. This is this is what I don't get, because she ends back up at the golf putter place, Mm -hmm. right? The mini golf place. So I don't get this whole scene. Where she's just kind of going around on like motorcycles and other people's cars. She's getting and back there. At one point, because she walks into a warehouse that's like wall to wall teenagers, like it's like like Alyssa Milano's gang in Double Dragon, and gets a standing ovation. Like Billie Jean is a sensation. Like she's more famous than Madonna. She's got. It's real. Fair is fair, god damn it. Fair is fair. And America, America has had it with this bullshit. With unfair. Fair is fair. Fair is fair. I mean, mostly. I did almost get raped and, and my brother, like, shot him. So, I mean, that I guess that cancels out. So, is fair is fair? Question mark. I mean, who dictates the terms of fair is fair? We're still not clear on that. But damn it, we've had enough of unfair. Fair yeah. is fair. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the videotape that we talked about earlier where she was like, I'm going to tell the world our side of the story. But then she doesn't do that at all. Right, right. And it's like, you kind of missed an opportunity there, honey. But I guess fair is fair. You just want the 608 so you can move on with your life. But Give me 350. We're not going to talk about any of the other shit. Right. I mean, like, okay, well, I'll save it for the end. But Jesus Christ. Okay. She's got an underground network. Like, like, carry it Tubman style. What the hell? No, she gets rescued by herself. There, a Camaro pulls up and goes, uh-huh. get in. And she's like, hi, me. Why are she you saving me? me? You, me. Yeah. And you're like, okay. And then like that, she ends up in another car with like four other me's. Uh-huh. And even if she didn't hide, they'd never be able to find her because America is all Spartacus right now. Yep. They are Spartacus. True. All right, so she does go back to the mini golf park, but mini golf park, and she finds Binks and Lloyd there, and she's like Binks, and then Lloyd steps from behind the the wall, and he's like, "I'm here too," and she's like, "Bone me!" So they, I think they do. I mean, it's implied. I think the camera 
up and to the left implies the, the left. sex. Okay. All right. What happens if it goes up and to the right? Then you it's- see the audio guy. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I'm in the movie. Oops. <laughs> he just slowly steps back. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> it was up and to the left, right? <laughs> oh, jeez. Left, right? Oh no! <laughs> That's where the confusion just, comes from. It, I'm the audio guy. I'm the only one that knows up and to the left. What? <laughs> All right. Uh, Ringwald finds some golf balls in the back of the station wagon that they. they, they got turned in so he's like oh golf balls mini golf there's a mini golf park over there i'll go over there no the, no, the mini golf park had stamped the balls ah, okay. address and everything yeah. all right they were right. advertisement balls in case they were stolen because they always get stolen okay it's funner to just think he pieces it together but anyways he goes over there and he's like all right kids here's the deal i want to make you a deal i want you to get uh, we're gonna we're gonna fix that Scooter up better than it was new. It, using my money again. Nothing, nothing has changed, but I, you just ignore that part. It's going to be better than new. Uh, all you got to do is come in. So it's the same deal from before, and you're still not going to get justice from Pyatt. But a sweet scooter. Bye. Well, maybe well, because he's already planned at least one ambush. Therefore, we might actually get Pyatt. This time around is what the detective, I think, is thinking. Huh, okay. Well, that and, like, as they're going along with this, they hear, like, the radio station has exceeded a $608 of donations uh-huh. for them. Yamaha is willing to give them a brand new scooter. Um, so Except the for Binks is like, a scooter back. Yamaha? Ugh. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Yamaha and Honda are the exact same thing. What? Fuck you, Jack. You <laughs> Red Riders for life. Oh, my God. Whatever. Actually, so, I'm, a Kawi- uh, I'm a Kawasaki man, was, personally. Those fine words. Go green, baby. <laughs> I like Vespas. <laughs> I, I do like Vespa. It is my favorite. Um, you guys must be royalty. Uh, it's so uptown. <laughs> Well, Vespa is just a really nice Italian scooter, and so are Peugeots. I, it, they're just good. It's per, it's per, it's anyway. pronounced Peraggio, you ignorant bastard. <laughs> I'm from Idaho, buttfuck, so I can say whatever I Me want. Me too, buttfuck. And be like, I it mean, is correct. Barely. You've never even hydro wiped. <laughs> It's because I grew up Bla- in the city, Blap, dude. Shots we had, fired. Like, ample toilets <laughs> and toilets right next to the public park, so there was no need to hydro wipe. I didn't have a flush toilet till I was five. <laughs> hydro wiping feels nice, though, Jackie. All yeah, that poo running <laughs> all around your body in a whirlpool of poo. <laughs> oh my god, that's so gross. <laughs> this is working good. Trust me. I'm not getting poo all over my stomach, bending over in the rapid. <laughs> plus, plus, you didn't take your shorts off all the way. You ankled your shorts around. You see, you just took a dump in it's your It's a shorts. poo net down there. Oh, my God. It's, you two are so disgusting. You better not be trying to do the butt wash in our pool, Justin. We're not disgusting, Jackie. We're just people of a simpler type. <sighs> All right. So they, they decide to accept his offer. It seems like a good deal. He's like, boy, I sure would just like to get the scooter back. I don't know about your whole political movement and everything, Gene, but I'm kind of tired of being on the run. I just want to ride around on Honda. Yeah. All right, so at the beach where the whole th- thing's supposed to shake out, it's officially Billy Jean Day. There's thousands of people. It's like Coachella. Maybe even bigger. Oh, it's like Coachella without any music. Right, right. Like Pat Benatar didn't show no, up, she, even man. though she's she's been in the movie like four times wall already. Wall, Pat Benatar, how is she not playing a concert in this movie? She didn't like it. So <laughs> Pat Benatar, when she would perform Invincible, because it was a pretty good hit, she says, 
I did this song for the worst movie that was ever made. Wow. Which I was like, whoa, Pat Benatar, maybe you should watch yeah. it again. I mean, we are they egged that da, da, da. song for everything. Heartache to heartache, we stand. I mean, like, she is the voice of this movie. And I, I know that's a different yeah. song, but, like, who that's, else are you going to... That's gonna... not the song, I know, but, Justin. like, think about that song. Like, Pat Benatar is the voice of this goddamn movie. Like, who else is going to be... Who's the MTV icon that could be the musical... Like, it's Pat Benatar. How do you not like this movie, Pat Benatar? If, you are this movie. She would have, if she would have got behind it, it probably would have made ten million. Right. No, that's weird. Because it's yeah, it's like that's all of the other movies that had shit like this theme songs are actually worse. Pat Benatar, totally. what the yeah, fuck? Totally, what the fuck, Pat Benatar? And also, you like kind of scuttled the Divinals had two songs in here before they got famous. They would have probably been a bigger hit Totes. earlier on Absolutely. too. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, but. Well, and Queen was in this movie, too. Billy Idol? Billy Idol and Wendy O. Williams? Yeah, I mean, like, guys, Wendy o. guys make an appearance. This is this is your shtick. You guys are all supposed to be rebellious and stuff. You're like, we're not going to Texas. No. Not even for a show. Touché. Good point, yeah. Ugh. All right, so the DA, he's brought in his own sharpshooters, and Ringwald's like, dude, what do you got sharpshooters here for? That's not cool, man. Uh, we're taking these kids in. And he's like, it's, it's okay. This is Texas. They're here for just in case. Plus, you got... Sh and the guy's like... He runs up to the sharpshooters, like, put the... Give me your guns in the clips. And the guy's like, you ain't from around here, are you? <laughs> and he's like, okay, well, just don't shoot him. And he's like, you ain't you from around here, around are you? Yeah. Well, Billy Jean and Lloyd, they start walking over the hill. It, to this dramatic sunset happening behind them. And, uh, oh, wait, it's not Billie Jean. It's Binks. Dressed up as Billie Jean. Because Billie Jean's in the crowd to, like, check out the scooter beforehand to be like, it looks good. Go ahead and say you're not Billie Jean, Binks. Um, yeah, but then Hubie, like, ruins everything. That's not, that's yeah, not Billie Binks. Jean. Yeah. yeah, he starts his his UB ambush again. And then he stops. Cause he's like, Oh, that's not Billy Jean because I would already be kicked in the nuts right now. Right? If it was, that's somebody else. And then the guy from Texas is like warning shot, which is shooting somebody <laughs> in the arm. If you're from fucking Texas and he does a good job because he's from fucking Texas and he knows how to shoot. So that kid's going to be fine, but he's not going to fuck around anymore. God damn it. And the cops like, what the fuck? And he's like, I told you, shut up. You ain't from around here. We got it covered. <laughs> <clears throat> and the crowd freaks out. They surround Binks. He gets rushed to the hospital. And Billy Jean tries to get in, but she's too slow. But she sees, as she's running, she sees Pyatt. And he's in his Billy Jean shop. And uh, she's like, hey, who, who paid for that scooter? It wasn't you, was it? And the DA is like, yeah, it was me. Hello. And then she calls Pyatt a pig and kneels him in the balls. <gasps> and we should also mention that at this uh, Billy Jean stand mm -hmm. that he has created outside of his beach bum. Uh, his touristy fucking trap bullshit. He sells sheets. Oh, God. He sells she sells. Yeah. He sells seashells by the seashore. The seashore. Yeah. Is actually his fucking. There was mostly just seashells uh -huh. there. Right. It, right. That's Billy Jean swag. So he has also erected like a giant Billy Jean statue mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. and I don't know what it's made out of plaster. But I mean, or papier it's got a mache, papier, <laughs> and everything. And he's like, "Yeah, this is the Billy Jean. This is where you come to." I mean, this fucker went all in. It's a shrine, and I hope that it bank. I I hope that it bankrupted him. Well. He fought. I couldn't have. He was making. He was selling seashells before. Right. He's actually making money now. Right. Uh, yeah, he falls over, knocks over a lamp, and I guess that catches a bunch of hay on fire. Don't build your shops out of hay is the moral of this movie. And it burns to the ground, and Billie Jean looks up, and she sees a statue of herself on fire, just like Joan of Arc burned at the stake by Frenchmen. The legend of Billie Jean is being burned at the stake because she was never that legend. <laughs> I guess. 
She was just a gal. No, this is like totally implicit meaning here. Uh, she was just a gal trying to do the right thing, and everybody took it for something else. Okay. What they take? Okay. All right. Yeah, because then the crowd starts throwing in their yeah, stuff right. too. Yeah. Into the fire. Yeah, and then they end up in Vermont, and Binks is better. What? Who the hell knows what happened to Lloyd? I guess he went home. Uh, that's the end of the movie. Um, all right. What is the legend of Billie Jean, Sam? No one knows. Okay. They, what, they, what, they, what, I, they, you just said that that's not what she is. How do you know that that's not what she is if you say that, that nobody knows? I know what the legend of Billie Jean is. No, the problem with the legend of Billie Jean is that it became some... It, Billie Jean means a different thing to everyone that worshipped mm-hmm. her while she was just trying to do the right thing. At every point in this movie, she was just trying to do the right thing. She was trying to get $608, Sam. That's all she was trying to do. I don't know if it was the right thing. Yeah, that's all she was trying to do. It was six hundred eight dollars. Not even once it started snowballing. Not, then she was not, just trying to even, do the right. She saved a kid. Not even like uh, this guy needs to go to jail because he's going to do this to somebody else. It's not just about me. He is going to do it to somebody. He did it to my mom. He did it to me. He did it to Brenda, who lives in the trailer five B. He did it to Wendy, who lives in trailer six C, and even Dave, who lives in one two. Uh, he is going to do it again, but I'm not going to say anything about it. Nope. And Putter's like, he didn't do it to me. (laughs) Uh, I have my period now. (laughs) Yeah. Oh boy. What a, she's like, I'll go ask for the $608 and see what I can get. What a moral beacon with her $608 quest. Jackie, what's the legend of Billie Jean to you? You know, it's just somebody that was poor, that was taken advantage of, and wanted social justice. Social? She wanted $608. $8. $8. Yeah, she wanted it because she was, I'm sorry, but, you know, you can't be a rich asshole and break a bunch of shit and then not expect to get consequences. The kid had no consequences. And then the dad is a rapist. I mean, the whole family should just be inoculated. <laughs> I don't... Like against measles or something? <laughs> <laughs> you, you keep That's using that I word. I don't think you know what that word means. <laughs> I meant to say, like, put down like a dog. Oh, my Anesthetize. God. Or, I mean, euthanized. Whoops, I did it, too. Euthanized, not inoculated. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I'm sorry, I've been drinking... <laughs> yeah, everybody knows. I mean, just wipe those fuckers off the face okay, of the that's, planet. Okay, that's what of that's shit. what Billy that, Jean. Th- you're saying that that's what Billy Jean wants, but what's the legend of Billy Jean? Why is she a culture phenomenon? I, because she says fair is fair, and then all these people boosted her up her crimes to make her seem like she was more of a criminal than she was, and then. People who don't have anything going on in their own lives are like, I can latch on to that. I like crime. She's going against the system. She's bucking the system. Okay. And no, she's a dipshit trailer trash lady who's on the run that needs $608 for her brother's scooter. There is nothing special about her. She is just, I mean, and she, and she didn't even do anything wrong. She ran because she was afraid and she didn't know any better. And that made her a legend. And that's bullshit. So am I missing like some like thing with children in the 80s that we were being mistreated and like we needed uh, a messiah to come and break us out of we're getting wrong. Like, yeah, boy, these white teenagers sure got it hard in the 80s. We got to. If only we had somebody like MLK to come up and speak up for us. And it's her because she's party. What the fuck, man? Well, did I miss something? They didn't advertise. They didn't advertise, Justin, that she was doing that uh, butthole washing thing. Here I was in the 80s wiping my ass in the river. I was doing just fine. (laughs) I didn't need Billie Jean. I was a okay. I thought that things were pretty fair. I had a friend aim the river and it cleaned my beehole, and that's good enough for yeah. me. 
That's how she gets away from the gators. Is she just poops and they eat that instead. <laughs> They're like, oh, corn. <laughs> or it's because of all that Tex-Mex she's had. When she poops in the river, she just like acts like a jet boat. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> gets away from them. It's Newtonian physics. Lines them with the spices. It's Newtonian physics. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ain't that Billie Jean doing the butt scoot across the lake again? <laughs> Look at her go. Yeah. Racer, Tony. <laughs> I had eggs for breakfast. There's no chance. <laughs> and I didn't put any hot sauce on them, so I cannot yeah. blind the gators. Some asshole in a K5 blazer's like, shoot her. <laughs> And then he gets shot in the kneecap by a Texas sharpshooter. And he's like, what the fuck? You just shot me in the kneecap. And the guy's like, that was a warning shot. And he's like, put my kneecap. And he's like, it was a good warning. <laughs> fuck off. Texas. <laughs> written by Sneaker Madness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, all right. My question's going to go well, on. I think I there's guess. like symptomatic and implicit meaning here. Like she doesn't have any self-esteem. She yeah. grew up in the trailer. Okay. She, her mom's like top end of what she thinks she's gonna get so she really just wants the 608 bucks back but at the same time she's like doing the right thing throughout the whole thing and she's had it she's had it with bullshit and everyone that follows her has also had it with bullshit of their own in some way or another and that's where the legend comes from but also she does knee everyone right, right in the nuts yeah pretty good yeah, you can, you so can be a legend doing don't that. fuck with you can her be a legend doing that for sure uh like the guy in the mall that got interviewed and he's like yeah and she kicked that guy right in the <laughs> well, nuts <it> awesome <laughs> Zap! i love that scene it's like you should have seen it all right anybody else got any questions i okay. do jackie is this now your favorite movie <laughs> it's not gonna beat out the Beastmaster, if that's okay. what you're asking me, because the Beastmaster is awesome. Uh, but it's it's getting up there. I I getting really liked there. it. You it watched didn't... it one time. It's climbing the ranks. Yeah. After watching it, uh, I mean, it's it's gonna have to try real hard against like the Thorn Birds that I've watched <laughs> like a million times. <laughs> Sam has uh, another question now. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, somewhere in time which is my ultimate favorite movie. I love that movie. Um, but Billy Jean, it, uh, it did not disappoint me for wanting to see it as long as I did. I, I really, really liked it. I'll just go on with my recommendation. I, I really, really enjoyed it. It, it was kind of dumb, but you know, I, it was an eighties movie and it did not disappoint. It was, it didn't drag anywhere. It didn't have like, the bullshit meter wasn't so far off the chart that I was like, oh, come on. Okay. Uh, yeah. I really liked it. I would watch it again. Okay. Uh, okay. So I guess, Sam, did you have anything else to ask? Or... Okay. No. Because that would have been a bad transition if you'd gone to immediately been like, Jackie, did you like this movie to, oh, also, what happened to that guy? Um, I'll go next. Uh, yeah, it's a do. Uh, I loved it. Absolutely. 100%. I thought it was great. Uh, and I will beg to differ with Sam. I thought it was stupid as hell thematically. It's preposterous. But the weird thing about it is that there's no like one scene. Usually when we do movies, it's like, oh, that guy jumped his truck and it was uh, like over a shark and it's freaking crazy. And uh, he was firing both guns up in the air and he hit an airship and that airship crashed into Hitler. Uh, it was pretty zany sequence events. Uh, this movie doesn't have any of that. There's no one scene that's like, boy, those were good stunts or, or boy, that was really dumb dialogue. It's just the whole movie thematically is bonkers. And like visually it's so like eighties goop and the music is eighties goop. And it's just a bunch of eighties goop. And this movie that is really hard to describe without even seeing it. Like, we can tell you the, the events, but, like, the tone of this, this like, Jesus following of a teenage girl who just wants 608 bucks is nanners. And I freaking loved it. Two thumbs up. Sam. 
I loved it. Um, I think it does have a little something to say. And uh, it's a heap of a movie. There's two bad jump cuts that are just like, couldn't fix it in editing. Like That's all (laughs) the footage we had. So there's that. But at the same time with the whole like strong female character placation, this she's a strong female character, like really not even all that like manufactured. It's just, it just is that. And I liked her and she's awesome. And Billie Jean kicks everybody in the nuts and some people need to get kicked in the nuts. And I liked watching her do it. Yeah. uh, I highly recommend it to everybody. I think it's a weird, like it should be a bigger thing. Like totally should be a bigger thing, right? We're all on, we're all in a, in a core there, right? It should be a a bigger thing. The, um, why it got back on my radar, even though it was like, oh, I've always wanted to watch this, is I was talking to a, a friend of a friend, and she was like, well, it's not as good as The Legend of Billie Jean, and I was like, wait, what? You know, And it's like her favorite fucking movie, and I was like, oh. So the people that love this movie fucking love this movie, mm-hmm. so, yeah. All right, well, there you go. <laughs> That's your episode, gang. Um, <clears throat> next week on the show, we're going to do uh, something totally different uh ah, damn it no we're not well let me let me put it this way i don't have a movie pick for next week just to have a movie pick well i was gonna do blade trinity but sam doesn't have hbo still (laughs) so i have blade trinity oh okay i guess we're doing blade trinity (laughs) (laughs) i got i let me make sure but i got the whole pack of all all four blades because there was a DTV blade that didn't have Wesley Snipes yeah. that they fucking snuck in there afterwards. Okay, Blade Trinity is the movie. Uh, unless something changes, then we'll do something else. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys had a great time this week. Go watch Bill Jean and get to the chopper.